ओम ज्ञानतिरांधस्ञानाजनशलाकया चक्षुर्मिलत तस्म श्री गुरव नम श्रीचैतन्य मनोभीष्ट स्थापित येन भूतले स्वयं रूपा कदा मह्यम ददा स्वपदाक वंदेह श्रीगुरो श्रीयुतापतकमल श्रीगुर वैष्णवांश्च श्रीरूप सागर जात सहगनाथ तम सजीव साध्वैत सवधूत परजन सहित कृष्ण चैतन्य देव श्रीराधा कृष्ण पादान सहगन नुनिता श्री विशाखान्वता हे कृष्ण करुणा सिंधो दीनबंधो जगत्पते गोपेश गोपिका कांत राधा कांत नमोस्तुते तप्त कांचन गौरांगी राधे वृंदावनेश्वरी वृषभ्यानुसती देवी प्रणमा हरि प्रि वाचा कल्पतरुभ्य कृपा सिंधुभ्य पतिता पावनेभ्यो वैष्णवेभ्यो नमो नम जय श्री कृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभु निनंद श्रीअद्वैत गाधार श्रीवासादी गौरभक्त वृंद हरे कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे सो वी आर स्टडिंग चैप्टर एट we are studying chapter 8 we covered up to 19th verse uh, so the chapter is titled attaining the supreme so the beginning of the chapter is further questions by lord arjuna uh, sorry arjuna to lord krishna he asks some of the uh, questions like what is brahman what is adhi adhi atma karma adhi bhuta and adhi daiva and adi yagna uh, who are all these yeah? uh, and where does adi yagna reside so and how to remember uh, lord at the time of death so these are the questions that uh, uh, arjuna asks in the beginning and uh, krishna one by one answers all these questions so in the first uh, yeah uh, so yeah first one to four discusses the answers by arjuna sorry answers by krishna to arjuna's questions and then importance of remembering krishna at the time of death again this for the section is also in the same topic one should remember god at the time of death then he will go back to god uh, whatever one remembers that will become his next life if he remembers about material things he will come back to the material world if he remembers demigods he will go back to he will go to the planets of the demigods if he remembers god he will go back to god so our frame of mind becomes the frame of reference for next body so it's very important uh, to remember god at the time of death and how can one remember god at the time of death only when one lives all his life in remembering in practicing to remember god then he will easily remember uh, krishna at the time of death or god at the time of death because at the time of death if suppose somebody is about to die uh his mind will be occupied with the thing that he is most attached to right uh suppose somebody beats you somebody may call amma or you know some whatever comes from our uh, our mouth uh is generally representative of what we are most attached to like one may call his mother or you know somebody can say hari krishna or you know so whatever one take shelter of all his life right when he is in pain pain he will remember that right for example in this world we see when people are sometimes you know in their life they are seeing lot of uh, difficulties and challenges then they need some kind of relief some kind of uh, hope in those situations and generally they take shelter of things that they have lot of faith all their life in for example you know some people in the lower modes like mainly in the mode of ignorance right a person who is too much stressed out and you know his life is very miserable 
what does he take shelter of any suggestions if suppose somebody is going through a lot of difficulty in life and where is his shelter going to be if he is in the mode of goodness or, or sorry first answer if he is in the mode of ignorance suppose he is in thomas gun alcohol does, yes yeah we know many people take shelter of alcohol or gambling uh, if they are in lot of stress and distress if suppose somebody is in the mode of uh, uh, in the like somebody uh, is in the mode of passion what does he do he is in the mode of passion right uh, so either he work very hard you know because passion means you have a lot of energy uh, uh, you know in a very in a very negative state of mind he may work very very hard or maybe he will try to uh, reach out to some demigods and perform some pujas to get rid of the problems he has right uh, he may do some vratas you know a lot of people do these things to get rid of really good okay. thing if somebody is in the mode of goodness or a devotee what does he do what does he do anyone chant the name of the god yeah very good thank you mataji yeah he will try to remember hare god. krishna yeah he will try to remember god yeah he will try to remember krishna he will read bhagavad gita you know but just by really reading that he will get relief because krishna is there in those words and he will feel the assurance and shelter of krishna by reading bhagavad gita or bhagavatam right so that is the attitude of a uh, person in the mode of goodness so everybody reacts according to one's modes right uh, but ultimately uh, like death is the last thing one wants it's the most painful time uh, in fact it is said in the scriptures at the time of death uh, the pain one goes through not just physically emotionally also because he is about to leave the body the pain one goes through is considered as much equivalent to about 40000 scorpions biting at the same time that is the pain one goes through time of death is a very painful situation physically because body is deteriorating mentally and emotionally because he is getting out of the family he is attached to the the children mother father whoever it is uh, so he is you know drifting away from them so it's a very tough time for him and at that time one can remember god only if he has remembered all his life one at that time it becomes a realization wow all my life i thought this family is going to be with me you know this children are going to be with me this uh, home is going to be with me but now alas alas everything is taken away from me right the truth is only god right that's what one realizes if he is a devotee practicing all his life right? and then he'll take uh, he'll remember lord and uh, lord will protect him right that is how it is yeah, and then the next section is pure devotion service how one performs devotion service and then comparing of material worlds and spiritual worlds so here we are in 820 we'll go through the class paras tasmastu bhava anyo you want to repeat after me you can all unmute yourself and uh, you can repeat one line each line after me paras tasmatu bhava anyo paras tasmatu bhava anyo vyakto vyakta sanatana vyakto vyakta sanatana yassa sarveshu bhuteshu yassa sarveshu bhuteshu bhuteshu nasyastu na vinashyate Yes. yet there is another unmanifest nature which is eternal and is transcendental to this manifested 
and unmanifested matter. It is supreme and is never annihilated. When all in this world is annihilated, that part remains as it is. What is the what is Lord Krishna talking about here? Yet there is un, another unmanifest nature. Means there is another creation that exists that is not manifest to the world to the people in this world. That is not um, like that cannot be physically seen by the people of this world. And what is the nature of it? This world is, you know, is, is in a constant churn. It is constantly uh, changing and you know, there, it's going through creation and annihilation, creation and annihilation. But that world is eternal. Okay? And is transcendental. Means it's divyam. It's not material. Material, opposite of material is transcendental. Right, this transcendental to this manifested and unmanifested matter. It is supreme and is never annihilated. It cannot be annihilated. Even the highest planet in this metal world, Brahmaloka, is annihilated at the end of the day of Brahma. Right? Uh, no, no uh, at the end of you know the lifetime of Brahma. Uh, at the end of Bra Brahma's day, the other 14 planetary systems will be, you know, go through partial annihilation except Brahmaloka. But uh, at the end of life of Brahma, even Brahmaloka gets annihilated. But that spiritual planets, they are, you know, never annihilated. When all in this world is annihilated, that part remains as it is. Right? Krishna is referring to what is he referring to? Is he referring to Brahmaloka? The soul, right, Prabhuji, like that is eternal, like the jiva. Yes, the soul is eternal, no, but he is literally referring to a location here, which is eternal. So, at there is unmanifest nature. Yeah, soul is also eternal. It is not just the soul, the spiritual world, and uh, you know, the paraphernalia there. Everything is all eternal. At there is unmanifest nature. Yeah. So if you if you look at the his, uh, the previous verses, we'll understand the context. So for example, uh, last three verses, right? From the highest planet in the middle. So Lord Krishna is comparing material existence to uh, spiritual existence. Okay. Okay. So let's read from fifteen, right? After attaining me, the great souls who are yogis in devotion never return to this temporary world, which is full of miseries because they have attained the highest perfection. Right? If, a, if a person reaches Krishna's planet, he won't come to the metal world. This is clear. Mm -hmm. okay? Then from the highest planet in the metal world, metal existence is a 14 planetary system that we discussed. Every universe is a, uh, at least our universe, uh, as per our scriptures, we know. I don't know about other uh, metal universes and other, uh, you know, other universes. But at least our universe is a 14 planetary system. At the top one is the Brahma Loka and the bottom most one is Patal Loka. And there is 14 layers of levels of existence. From the highest planet in the metal world down to the lowest, all are places of misery, even including Brahma Loka. It is mentioned like that. Wherein repeat, the reason for misery is repeated birth and death takes place. But one who attains to my abode, is referring to spiritual planet here. O Samakunti never takes birth again. He will not take birth again. Clear, right? By yeah. whom calculation, a thousand ages taken together form the duration of Brahma's one day, right? He is comparing the lifetime here in the human form, means the Bhuloka, to Brahmaloka, just to uh, compare the lifetime of Brahma to our lifetime, right? So our lifetime. Uh, or at least the years, the the uh, our day, right? Uh, a thousand ages taken together form the duration of thousand chaturyugas will form one day of Brahma. Chaturyuga is Satyuga, Dwapar Yuga, Treta Yuga, and Kali Yuga. And if you multiply the whole time period with thousand times, that is one single day of Brahma. And also is his duration of his night. His night is also equally 
long and then brahma lives for 100 years on his own uh, time cycle right so everybody's lifetime is you know very now uh, varying just like we during this verse we discussed for example there are certain insects their whole lifetime is one night in the in the uh, in india you remember like when rain comes you will see so many flies and those flies will live through the night and morning they would all you know die and during that lifetime they actually you know they are born they will produce children they will have families but by the end of lifetime right the morning everything is done so lifetime is always a relative thing based on body similarly a cow becomes a mother by the age of 3 and it starts producing so many children and by the age of 20 she is like oldest you know oldest and wisest so lifetime is dependent on body to body it varies body to body uh just lord is comparing what is lifetime of brahma to ours but even the brahma's lifetime is so long even then the ca- the point is that material existence is misery uh, because even brahma has to leave the body at the end of it right? so every so as is mentioned here from the oh abrahma bona lor punara punara vritto janma arjuna మా ఉపేత్యత్తు కౌంతేయ పునర్జన్మన విద్యత ఇస్ అ వెరీ ఫేమస్ వర్స్ ఫ్రమ్ ది హైయెస్ట్ ప్లానెట్ ఇన్ ద మిడిల్ వరల్డ్ విచ్ ఇస్ బ్రహ్మలా కట్ ది లోయెస్ట్ ఆల్ ఆఫ్ ప్లేసెస్ ఆఫ్ మిజరీ వేర్ ఇన్ రిపీటెడ్ బర్త్ ఇన్ దట్ టేక్స్ ప్లేస్ బట్ వన్ హూ అటైమ్స్ మీ నెవర్ టేక్ బర్త్ అగైన్ ఎట్ ది బిగినింగ్ ఆఫ్ బ్రహ్మస్ స్టే ఆల్ ది లివింగ్ ఎంటిటీస్ బికమ్ మేనిఫెస్ట్ ఫ్రమ్ ది అన్మేనిఫెస్ట్ స్టే అండ్ దేర్ ఆఫ్టర్ వెన్ ది నైట్ ఫాల్స్ దే ఆర్ మర్జ్ ఇన్ టు అన్మేనిఫెస్ట్ అగైన్ సో దిస్ ఇస్ యు నో just telling how we are going through repeated birth and death while our existence continues in the material world again and again and again when brahma's day arrives all living entities come into being and with the arrival of brahma's night they are helplessly annihilated you see helplessly annihilated so mm-hmm. all of us like includes us also so all of us are going through this cycle uh for multiple days of brahma and multiple lifetimes of brahma also sometimes right so as long as we are in the metal world and we don't endeavor to go back to god this process is continuing yes harsha uh, hari krishna yeah hari krishna prabhu ji i have a silly question and i don't know if i will be able to put it in a right way but i'll still ask um so as you mentioned that um, like once brahma is end of his uh, life cycle so in his next uh, in the next janam of brahma would he be like would the soul of brahma be the same or would it like uh, oh, brahma is a post brahma is not a person i say yeah brahma is a post indra is a post But today's i mean current indra's name is purandara it's a post next life next you know, for this specific universe the next brahma is already decided it was also listed then uh, i think i forgot the name but the brahma's name is already fixed oh okay got it okay so yeah and i think this current brahma is actually going to vaikuntha next in this uh, after this his lifetime he's he's it's also determined what is his current is it is actually in the middle of mid, he's a middle aged man he's 50 years current exactly currently yeah uh, so all these are there uh, these details are there in bhagavatam and other scriptures uh, but you know bhagavad gita is like a you know uh, it just gives basic idea so yeah so one question prabhu mm-hmm. so from go from vaikuntha vaikuntha we came uh, our in our own will to here right material world yes so are these more souls coming now from vaikuntha to this material world or is it like that's past everyone has to go now no uh, there are always see it's like your question is like prabhu uh, are the jails getting new inmates 
Yes, yes. Are the jails getting in new inmates? Huh? Yes, like they are now. getting. Just like you know, any city of operation, uh, there will be always you know by mistake violator. There are violators always, right? Right, right. Every city has a cell. Every city has a jail because when you have a choice, there is a tendency to make the mistake. Even though the percentage is always less than one percent, right? In a city, ninety-nine percent of the people are legitimate citizens. Uh, they want to follow the laws, but there is one percent of people who, you know, unwillingly or willingly, there is a chance for them to violate the law, right? So jail yeah. is an arrangement within the city, uh, so that uh, the rest of the citizens are separated from the uh, these people who are, you know, by nature, not willing to follow the laws, right? So similarly, material world is filled with one percent of living entities. Even though it appears like unlimited in living entities here, it is again one percent of the total existence, or you know, say you know five percent or one percent. It's minimal. It's a minority community here in the material existence, which includes not just human beings, all the animals, plants, trees, reptiles. This cycle of chara chara jagat, everything included, is just a minute percentage of existence. right um, and everybody is evolving through their consciousness right? evolving and then at one point they come to their junction junctional life which is human form of life at this point they can decide you know, should they want to continue their material existence or they want to go back to god uh, based on their life choices right? so human life is a very highly privileged situation because uh, it provides an opportunity to perfect one's life and not come back to this world again this is a great it's like a junction junction means you have multiple roads in other forms of life very little choice there are although there are people who liberated in other bodily forms like you know there are stories of animals who got liberated but it's very rare and one cannot expect but human form of life yeah it's a perfect opportunity to get out of this middle existence so mm. prabhu so if uh, there are souls still coming to this real world mm. as we go back is there a chance that we can come back again no krishna says once you have experienced this you will not come back because you no know, you will learn the lesson you will not come back that's what krishna says yeah okay there is no chance once you uh, actually it will come in this chapter i think yeah. okay okay yeah. krishna issues that because it's like you know generally some people make meet mistake only once right if suppose uh, as a child uh, your mother or father told you don't touch fire it is hot it's going to burn you uh, you may not listen immediately and you know sometimes you get out of uh, out of uh, you know uh, naughtiness you might go and touch the fire but once you experience you won't try it that's the last time you do that correct yes yeah it's exactly like that so krishna himself says once you come back you are not going to go back again yeah, right? prabhu ji uh, in that regard so um, prahlada's father like hiranya kashipu uh, he was like the gatekeeper right for uh, vishnu and like somebody okay. one of the sages or like curses him and that's how he is born isn't there some story like that that's true yeah so essentially he was in vaikuntha but still he was cursed to be like born on earth and you know to be um, destroyed by vishnu mm-hmm. correct yeah so they have come from vaikuntha yes so they were uh, uh, they were cursed by chatur kumaras yeah because ananda uh, those kumara four kumaras bo- brahmana boys who went to vaikuntha door and they were rejected by jay vijay so their their name in the vaikuntha planet is jaya vijay they are gatekeepers of vaikuntha right right so they mm-hmm. were uh, cursed it's an arrangement by the lord actually this whole thing was an arrangement by the lord and uh, jay vijay were obviously you know great devotees however when lord wants to come to the middle world okay 
obviously to perform past times and teach the world a lesson he need to pick the associates he need to choose some people as his associates right mm-hmm. he wouldn't come and perform past times with mid, like the contaminated limitations in the metal world who don't have who don't who are not capable enough to do anything here right so he picks jai vijay to perform past times actually uh, whenever lord performs past time he chooses his closest closest devotees and in that way they were chosen and to fight lord who can be a better person than a great devotee of the lord himself so even though they came here they were like you know very bad people all of that but the it, it's all an arrangement by the lord actually and they so here so they they took multiple forms right one as um, one as hiranyakashipu and hiranyaksha and uh, ravana kumbhakarna and then in the third lifetime uh, as kamsa and shishupal right mm. so in this way they you know they came with every incarnation of the lord in each age right in satyuga dvapriyuga tritayuga so in each age they came so they were chosen devotees and especially uh, you know just like for example sometimes we may feel the desire to play sports i, I feel like i go and play shuttle for example with my daughter uh, just for you know sportive nature is there right within everybody uh somebody want to do things like that and lord also has this kaivalry spirit meaning he wants to fight right so when he desires that to fulfill the the desire and these devotees desire to fulfill that particular desire of the lord and so it's matching their desire right so they they were uh, so and so they were arranged whenever lord comes to the metal world you know uh so that they they actually become the enemy of the law right even though in those forms they were actually cursing and doing all of that actually they are all you know lord himself knows very well i mean internally but at, in the during the past times he lives in the moment i mean neither lord and nor the hiranyakashipu know that they are actually uh, you know uh, lord his mentality as hiranyakashipu is completely such that lord is my enemy mm-hmm. but it's a perfect arrangement with the lord i mean it's very inconceivable uh, to understand but the whole thing was orchestration of uh, you know is a pastime of the lord so okay. for lord sake devotees come from vaikuntha right to perform some service right so this is a service for jai visa uh, so similarly like great devotees come time and again to you know uplift the jivas right great devotees prahlad maharaj prahlad maharaj was an eternal associate he comes and also even uh, uh, you know ramanujacharya right ramanujacharya they are all from vaikuntha but they come to teach the world ramanujacharya uh, we see like madhvacharya and you know even shila prabhupad they are all liberated uh, you know in the but they come to the middle world and spend time here and engage in the service of the lord and help the jivas right to actually go back to god okay thank you prabhu ji yeah so here if you see again and again when brahma's day arrives all the living entities come into being and with the arrival of brahma's night they are all helplessly annihilated yet so krishna after telling you know people all living entities they helplessly get annihilated they come again and again and again he gives the hope or you know or the other side of it which is yet there is another unmanifest nature which is he is speaking about the spiritual world spiritual realm which is eternal and is transcendental to this manifested and unmanifested nature it is supreme and is never annihilated this world has the nature of annihilation but that world doesn't have when all this world is annihilated that part remains as it is now he further describes about that uh, nature avyakto akshar iti uktas avyakto akshar iti uktas tamahu paramam gatin 
Please read, anyone? That which the Vedantists describe as unmanifest and infallible, that which is known as the supreme destination, that place from which, having attained it, one never returns. That is my supreme abode. The Dhamma Paramam Mama means that place is mine. That supreme abode is mine. Right? Yam Prapyana Nivartante. Once you go there, you will not come back. This is exactly the, <laughs> your question came right after. I mean, it is for most of the people, right? But for Great devotees, Lord invites them again and again to perform pastimes. Right? Arjuna is always there whenever Krishna comes to this world. Right? Uh, he is a constant companion. So similarly, some other devotees, Hanuman always comes with Rama. Right? Whenever Lord Rama comes to this uh, material world to teach a lesson, uh, to perform pastime, Hanuman is always there. Because that is their service. They love to be there to serve the Lord whenever the Lord comes. And also many devotees, as I said, like many acharyas come time and again to serve the Lord. Even Jesus is considered like a teacher, a great acharya. Muhammad is also considered a teacher. So like that, based on you know time, place, circumstance, they give different teachings. Right? They may not be exactly the same teachings. Uh, if suppose you go to first class uh, student, right? you teach according to his level. You, you go to a PhD student to teach according to his level. So like that, uh, levels of teaching and uh, methods of teaching, methods of uh, worship, they're all going to vary a bit here and there. But overall, the idea is uh, Lord always loves us and so he always keeps sending the devotees. So Prabhu, in every Treta Yuga, Rama is going to burn? Uh, come up here. Yes. In general, Lord Rama, the, the details may change a little bit here and there, but uh, yeah, he comes. See, um, the the scriptures would vary. The same Ramayana uh, uh, will have you know different variations of stories, right? For example, um, in in different uh, Chatur Yugas, right? But the overall theme and overall lessons are very similar, right? So in every Kali Yuga, whoever is the incarnation that comes, they teach the same Nama, uh, the chanting of the Holy Name. So like that, uh, that Yuga Avatar comes to teach that Yuga principle, the principle of liberation for that Yuga, right? For Satya Yuga, it is performance of meditation. For uh, Treta Yuga, it is the performance of Jagnas. For Dwapar Yuga, it is the performance of temple worship. For y Kali Yuga, it is the chanting of the Holy Name. So in this way, every Yuga has one specific method of attaining perfection or attaining liberation. And the specific incarnation comes to teach them. Right? Uh, the stories vary a little bit here and there. There are multiple incarnations also come sometimes. Right? For example, Balaji is also considered an incarnation here in this Kaliuga, Kaliuga Avatar. He comes in uh, South India. Right? Varahasan, uh, Varaha Purana talks about it. Uh, so similarly, uh, the you know uh, that's why you see, uh, you would see Narsingadev comes. He performs past times. But you would see this, you know, Narsingadev's appearance pastimes in Andhra Pradesh. You would see Narsingadev's pastimes in Karnataka, right? So multiple places you would see, and everywhere it's mentioned in the Stalapurana that Lord Narsimha came here, he performed this pastime, protected Prahalad. This is the mountain from which Prahalad was thrown down. So all those are mentioned. How is it? How to understand that? Same nursing there, how he appeared in, you know, the land of Andhra Pradesh and land of Karnataka, and you know, how do we understand, right? 
so it is mentioned that the same past times keep repeating when lord incarnates in in his multiple incarnations uh, you know in this is he comes and in a different kalpa also he comes and he chooses a different place and different uh, prahalad or you know different circumstances and a slight variation of the story so the whole thing keeps happening in multiple locations it need not be in one place that's why you see sometimes multiple places right so that's how it is okay bro thank you so i don't know whether it is asked previously but so uh, we see that god appears mostly in different parts of india only right so why is it like that so Very why good. can't it be any other country <laughs> yeah it's a good question uh it's not a privilege but lord comes everywhere however he he performs past times in bharatbhumi because bharatbhumi is considered punya bhumi okay this is a common question that people ask uh, it's like suppose governor comes to the state he always goes and resides in governor bangla only right he won't reside everywhere uh it's his choice you can say right uh, it depends on the people and you know, who he wants to reciprocate with um, but generally yeah definitely bharat bhumi is considered very auspicious place and so he incarnates directly there yeah um, there are demigod incarnations in other places it means mentioned in scriptures but the lord himself generally came in you know primarily in the land of bharat so we was all only one right we divided this world into exactly. multiple yeah uh, this, this all all this europe and all of them those were uh, you know uh, were actually originally ruled by until until um until the time of at least till our yudhishthira maharaj right uh, the dynasty 5000 years back uh, the whole world was ruled by the king from hastinapur and that's why you see the culture of the so called greek culture and all of the those are actually uh, you know rooted in indian culture it's not like they are different cultures uh, right uh, they are all rooted in indian culture yayati sons have moved to europe and all these countries and they have become kings there right uh, and the land outside india the the were considered to be occupied by mostly tribes in those days so you see yavanas they are called yavanas yavanas means who who eat flesh and you know who who live barbaric life most of the turkey and all these you know european nations and you know uh, like red indians these were all like uh, mostly uh, uncultured and um, uh, you can say uh, uh, you know uh, who don't have good culture right uh, their their living habits or you know all those are very low and so the king from hastinapur were you know would be the overall king for the entire world and everybody would actually uh, accept that right and uh, you know representatives would be going from hastinapur to actually help various you know nations parts of the world trade used to happen so that was all the way it was but then you know over a period of time the india has shrink 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 even you know the countries neighboring countries now they all divided from us right bhutan Nepal, Pakistan, Bangladesh—they are all part of it until hundred years back. But now they are also divided. So overall, India is shrinking. But you know, the land of Bharat was originally much larger. It, it it occupied the entire earth. Right? There used to be one king for the planet. Even for other planets, I mean, we read in Bhagavatam, uh, you know, how the universe was. You know, sorry, the Earth planet was divided into seven. you know seven uh, bhu mandala was divided into seven parts and each of these parts were divided uh, you know ruled by different people and those seven parts are not the seven uh, you know islands within earth 
they are actually at a different plane level and the whole earth was ruled by one person always that was primarily the king of uh, king from bharat uh, yeah Let's read this. Purusha sa para parda. Purusha sa para parda. Bhatya labhya sa ananyaya. Bhatya labhya sa ananyaya. Vashyanta stani bhutani. Vashyanta stani bhutani bhutani. Yena sarvam idam tatam. Yena sarvam idam tatam. Hmm. Yeah, please read anyone. The Supreme Personality of Godhead, who is greater than all, is attainable by unalloyed devotion. Although he is present in his abode, he is all pervading and everything is situated within him supreme personality of god is greater than all he is attained by attainable by unalloyed devotion one can attain lord you see the words are very clear purushahsa para parda is the supreme lord greater than everybody para means above everyone uh, and then bhaktya labhyastva ananyaya what should be done bhaktya means labhya means one can get it and twa ananyaya ananya means unalloyed means undeviating means one one focus single focus right? there is no distraction or deviation in that so the supreme lord can be attained by through bhakti hmm. यस्यांतस्तानि भूतानि येन सर्वं इदं ततं सो लॉर्ड ऑल्सो ही इज प्रेजेंट इन हिज अबोर्ड ही इज ऑल्सो ही इज इन वैकुंठा ही इज इन स्पिरिचुअल प्लैनेट्स आई मीन ही इज ही रिप्लिकेट्स हिमसेल्फ इन ऑल द प्लैनेट्स इन द स्पिरिचुअल प्लैनेट्स देयर आर सो मेनी वैकुंठास ही इज ऑल परवेडिंग ही इज ऑल विरवेद एंड एवरीथिंग इज सिचुएटेड विद इन हिम हाउ डू वी अंडरस्टैंड ही इज ऑल परवेडिंग He is in every where, in every location, everywhere. So, how do we understand? Anybody want to answer how Lord is all pervading? In the Chero da Kasai Vishnu form. Perfect. Thank you so much. So, in the form of Chero da Kasai Vishnu, he is present in every single body. As what is the term for that form of the Lord? That is Paramatma. exactly thank you so much so he is present as paramatma right and what is the duty of paramatma i mean there is no duty but you know what, what does he do as paramatma he fulfills our desires perfect thank you so he is the one who is fulfilling our desires we are only desiring i want to lift the laptop who is actually enabling the laptop to be lifted if i have the karma to be able to lift the laptop means my hand is working and all then lord would order this body to lift the hand means material nature is under the control of the lord so he is actually fulfilling our desires so soul atma on its own cannot do anything it just uh, is there it is it's only desiring and lord is fulfilling through the agency of material energy our body is actually whose property paramatma or you know the god's property and everything is situated within him how do we understand this part how do we understand that everything is situated within him any thoughts on that he is within everything now the other statement is everything is within him it looks contradictory right the soul metal world is in him but he is not part of it. hmm 
yeah the whole middle world actually comes from him and everything is within him uh, as as mahavishnu the original there are three levels right one is mahavishnu or uh, karanavadaka sai vishnu second is from his from his bodily force universes emanate like golden globules right they all emanate from uh, from his body and they all they all cling to the material energy and each of these golden globules were you know would expand into a universe and within the universe lord resides as garbhodak sai vishnu and from his navel comes the lotus on which brahmas is born and he meditates on lord and he ultimately performs the secondary creation and again to sustain the all these planetary systems lord again helps there he becomes part of you know he, and all the jivas in the mean time were actually living in the tummy or uh, you know or the garbha of the garbhodak sai vishnu and and when the residents are ready means the the 14 planetary systems are ready these jivas would be placed in those uh, 14 planetary systems according to their karma right? based on who belongs i mean past karma and all right so they they will be placed accordingly and so ultimately everybody actually is living within the you know within the body of lord uh, so in that sense yeah everything is situated within him yeah and also other way to understand is brahman is all pervading correct brahman is effulgence right the pure con- brahman means pure consciousness outside the material existence is brahman okay within the brahman all the material universes are floating right now right uh so all these material universes which are floating in brahman and brahman is you know bodily effulgence of lord and because everything is within the brahman it is also you can say everything is situated within lord so that we will understand everything exists within brahman and brahman is it's like you know sun and sunlight sunlight is all pervading uh you, one can say uh i have i i can have a pot right a pot of water and sun's reflection is in the water i can say hey sun is in this water right you can say that that is like sun uh, the analogy to understand uh, he is within everything right sun the same sun which is in the sky is in the pot you can say because sun is reflected in the water in the pot in the water of pot that is one way the other way is everything is within sunlight because nobody can you know when he is outside he cannot escape sunlight so everything is within sunlight so that is the other way everything is situated within him because uh, the whole planets are floating within the brahma jyoti yeah i think proper explains that very well all the variegatedness manifest there is of the quality of spiritual birth nothing that is there is material that variegatedness is expanded as a spiritual expansion of the spiritual supreme god himself for the manifestation there is total uh, there is totally of the spiritual energy as expanded in chapter 7 as far as material world is concerned although lord is always in his supreme abode he is nonetheless all pervading by his material energy so by his spiritual and material energies he is present everywhere both in the middle world and the spiritual universes yashanta sthan means that everything is sustained within him within either his spiritual or material energy the lord is all pervading by these two energies hmm hmm Yeah. So the Brahma Samhita is a prayer by Lord Brahma. In that, uh, it clearly confirms that Lord is always in the supreme abode, Goloka Vrindavana. So when Lord, Lord Brahma prayed to Lord before performing his duty of creation, he prays to the Lord. He meditates on the Lord for a very long time, for thousands and thousands of years. 
So after that, when Lord appears, he prays like this. What does he say? Uh, so that everything is going. Golok eva neshati akilapa bhuta. Govinda Madhi Purusham Tamahandajan. Let's read this verse. It's a beautiful prayer by Lord Brahma. Ananda Chinmaya Rasapati Bhavita Bis Tadhirya Evani Nijarupa Tayaka Labhi Goloka Eva Nivasati Akilapa Bhuto Govinda Madhi Purusham Tamaham Bajami. Please read anyone. I worship Govinda, the Lord residing in his own realm, Goloka, with Radha, resembling his own spiritual figure, the embodiment of the aesthetic potency possessed by the 64 artistic activities in the company of her confidence, Sakhis, embodiments of the extensions of her bodily form, um, permitted and vitalized by his ever blissful spiritual prasa. Yeah, so he's just glorifying Lord in the Goloka, what he does. This is a prayer of Lord Brahma. See, Lord Krishna, we know he came uh, in Dwapar Yuga within this particular Chatur Yuga, right? But Lord Brahma was praying this, doing this prayer at the beginning of creation. Okay? So it's not that Lord Krishna just came, who was there before, who is the Lord before. People ask the questions like that. Krishna keeps coming again and again. Uh, it's not like he just came, comes in this proper this, this is just a current reference. But he can actually, you, you see this, this is a beautiful, I mean, if you read this, you will understand everything. So he compares, who is the, what is the position of Lord Shiva, right? All offsprings of the consort of great Lord Maheshwara of this mundane world are of the nature of the embodiment of the mundane, masculine and feminine generative organs. So this is basically, if you look at Shivalinga, it, 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 uh, it looks like a you know, uh, masculine organ of, uh, you know. The reason is Lord Shiva is the originating principle for existence here in the material world. That's why it's called Maheshwara. Mahe, Mahi means material world. Ishwara means the controller, the highest. So Lord Shiva is kind of Lord Shiva and Parvati. The, Parvati is the female potency and Lord Shiva is the male potency. They, they're called, you know, the, the generative potency. Right? Within this world, you can say they are the highest, you can say, because they are the original. But who is Maheshwara? He is actually, um, he is an expansion of Lord. He comes from the Lord. Right? This is very philosophical. But a uh, but lot of principles are described. The person embody, embodying the material ca cause, casual, causal principle means the reason, the principle. Via the great lord of the mundane world, Sambhu, in the form of the male generating organ, is joined to his female consort, the limited energy, Maya, as the efficient causal principle. The lord of the Mahavishnu. Lord of the world Mahavishnu is manifest in him by his subjective portion in the form of his glance. So Lord Mahavishnu is working through the principle of Shambhu, right, Maheshwara, and is actually causing the, uh, you know, uh, the running of the material universe, actually. The Lord of the mundane world Mahavishnu, see mundane world, Mahavishnu again is sub-principle of Krishna, right? 
is an expansion for the purpose of creation. So uh, Mahavishnu, not at the level of Krishna, right? Is is a you know is a uh, like a third level incarnation from Krishna. Right? Expansion of the expansion is called. Possesses thousands of thousands of heads, eyes, hands. He is the source of thousands and thousands of avatars. In his thousands and thousands of subjective portions, he is the creator of the thousands of thousands of individuals. The same Mahavishnu is spoken by the name of Narayana in this mud, in this mundane world. You see, you will understand now, like who is who, and so Brahma Samhita is like a uh, index. It tells who is who. What is Lord Shiva in relation to Krishna? What is Mahavishnu in relation to Krishna? You know, from the eternal person has sprung the vast expanse of water of the spiritual ocean. The subjective portion of Shankarshana who abides in Paravyoma, the above supreme, uh, the above supreme Pusha with thousands of subjective portions, reposes in the state of divine sleep, Yoganitra, in the waters of spiritual conservation. The spiritual seeds of Shankarshana exist, existing. So Shankarshana is the source of Mahavishnu. Uh, existing in the pores of screen of Mahavishnu are born as so many golden sperms. These sperms are covered with five great elements. The same Mahavishnu entered into each universe as his own. This is about the, the three incarnations. We just described in a very limited terminology, but here is the actual principle because Brahma clearly understands the terminology and you know the exact scientific process that happens uh, in, the, in the process of creation. Uh, the same Mahavishnu entered into each universe as his own separate subjective portions. The divine portions that entered into each universe are possessed of his majestic extension. That is, they are eternal universal soul Mahavishnu, possessing thousands and thousands of heads. The same Mahavishnu created Vishnu from his left limb. Created Vishnu from his left limb, Dhamma. The first progenitor of beings from his right limb. And from the space between his two eyebrows, Shambhu, the divine masculine manifested halo. <laughs> the function of Shambhu in relation to Jivas is that the universe enshrining the mundane egoistic principle has originated from Shambhu. The ego principle actually comes from Shambhu. Thereupon the same great person, personal Godhead, assuming the threefold forms of Vishnu, Prajapati and Shambhu, Entering into the mundane universe, place the past tense of preservation, creation, and destruction of this world. This past time is contained in the mundane world, hence it's it it being perverted. The Supreme Lord, identical with Mahavishnu, prefers to consort with Goddess Yoga Nidra, Goddess Yoga Nidra, the constituent of his own spiritual potency, full of ecstatic trance of eternal bliss appertaining to his own divine personality. I don't even understand. We need to, uh, but you know, we can get the principle, right? When Vishnu lying in the ocean of milk wills to create this universe, a golden lotus springs from his naval pit. The golden lotus with its stem is the abode of Brahma representing Dhammaloka or Satyaloka. Before their conglomeration, the primary elements in their nascent state remained originally separate entities. Non-application of the conglomerate process is the cause of their separate existence. Divine Mahavishnu, primal Godhead, through association with his own spiritual potency, mood, maya, and by the application of conglomerating principle, created those different entities in their state of cooperation. And after that, he himself consorted with Yoganidra by way of his eternal dalliance with spiritual potency. It's a little hard, hard English. By conglomerating all those separate entities, he manifested the innumerable mundane universes and himself entering into the inmost recess of every extended conglomerate. At that time, those jivas who had lain dormant during the cataclysm were awakened means all the jivas will be again uh, having the opportunity to again take uh, you know take bodies and uh, fulfill their desire the same jiva is eternal and is for eternity and without a beginning joined to the supreme lord by the tie of an eternal kinship is transcendental spiritual potency 
the divine lotus which springs from the navel pit of vishnu is in every way related to the spiritual tie with all souls and is the origin of four faced brahma worst in the four vedas means he is expert in four vedas on coming out of lotus brahma being guided by the divine potency tuned his mind to the act of creation under the impulse of previous impressions but he could see nothing but darkness in every direction then the goddess of learning saraswati the divine consort of supreme lord said thus to brahma who saw nothing but gloom in all direction oh brahma this mantra klim krishnaaye govindaaya gopi janavallabhaya swaha will assuredly fulfill your heart's desire oh brahma do the this spiritual association by means of this mantra then all your desires will be fulfilled brahma being desirous of satisfying govinda practice the culture cultural acts for krishna in goloka the lord of svatadvipa for a long time his meditation ran thus there exists a divine lotus of thousand petals augmented by millions of filaments in the transcendental land of goloka on its wall there exists a great divine throne on which is seated sri krishna the form of eternal effulgence of transcendental bliss playing on his divine flute resonant with the divine song with his lotus mouth he is worshiped by his amorous milkmaids with their respective subject portions subject to portions and extensions and also by the external energy embodying all the mundane qualities then gayatri mother of vedas being made manifest imparted by the divine sound of the flute of sri krishna entered into the lotus mouth of brahma born from himself through his eight ear holes because he has four heads the lotus born brahma having received the gayatri sprung from the flute song of krishna attained the status of the twice born means now he is actually initiated like a, a brahman having been initiated by the supreme primal preceptor godhead himself he was initiated by lord himself enlightened by the recollection of the gayatri embodying the three vedas brahma became acquainted with the expanse of the ocean of truth then he worshiped sri krishna the essence of all vedas with this hymn. with this him i worship govinda the primal lord the first progenitor who is tending the cows yielding all desires in a world built with spiritual gems surrounded by millions of purpose trees always served with great reverence and affection by hundreds of thousands of lakshmis or gopis now worship no his this is all prayers by lord brahma to lord krishna this way, yeah you see brahma samhita gives so all that we discussed about incarnation they, that's all partly coming from here and of course bhagavatam describes uh, in far more vivid details this is a glimpse this is a very uh, like a abstract very abstract it's very difficult to understand see mm-hmm. yeah uh, i can't hear you sagar prabhu Can, can you hear me now prabhu yeah i can hear you yeah how did prabhupad wrote these books with uh, so much complicated uh, words yeah <laughs> but actually you know there any the language here is complicated if you look at bhagavad gita language is simpler you know the reason the reason is this is actually the english of prabhupad's guru bhakti siddhant sir stakur and oh. his english is very complicated uh you see if you have to read this his books they are very very difficult for you know modern man in fact you know it is during british time even britishers would f- find it very difficult to understand bhakti siddhant sir stockers english <laughs> when he okay. whenever he gives speech uh, because uh, you know he is uh, you know he is very eloquent and his english was you know uh, extremely good and prabhupad himself says you know he is line guru i am no comparison to my guru <laughs> uh, like that prabhupad actually made all these principles see all these principles that we discussed they are so easily presented by prabhupad in a very the all the spirituality was presented in a very approachable fashion uh, by shri prabhupad in fact so otherwise you know the our previous acharyas were you know they were composing bhagavad gita bhushan jeeva goswami 
there are books called Shat Sandarbhas. If you read them, uh, they are so scholastically presented. The same philosophy that Prabhupada presents, but you know they are at a different level, like completely. But after you relish Prabhupada's books, you know the simple English and all the principles, then you can actually you know relish what the you know other the, his previous acharya. If you go back, you know one level above, one level above, the the philosophy gets you know very complicated. But Prabhupada was such a great teacher. Uh, he's like, you know, opens banana with peeling all the banana, you know, just gives like a kids, right? That's how he gave all the principles because his audience is Americans, especially when he, when he came to America and Americans were given this philosophy. And so he had to really uh, work in a way so that all these American people can actually accept these principles in an easy way. So he had to simplify the language and preaching and you know, present in a very logical fashion. Right? It's a, not an easy task. What he just like we are reading Prabhupada's book. For Prabhupada to refer, these are the books he had to refer. Right? <laughs> you look at the complicatedness. Right? You look at Ishopanishad. Uh, I you know I teach Ishopanishad. Uh, it's even more complicated. Just read this one thing. I'll read this one. The personality of Godhead is perfect and complete. And because he is completely perfect, all emanations from him, such as this phenomenal world, are perfectly equipped as complete wholes. Whatever is produced of the complete whole is also complete in itself. Because he is complete whole, even though so many complete units emanate from him, he remains the complete balance. <laughs> yeah. Right? So I tease this. I mean, we can learn this afterwards. It's a if you learn this, you know, you'll understand how uh, Prabhupada actually simplified for us so easily. Yeah, Prabhu. Thank you. Everything animate or inanimate that is within the universe is controlled and owned by the Lord. One should therefore accept only those things necessary for himself, which are set aside, set aside as his quota. And one should not accept other things knowing well to whom they belong. Everything belongs to whom? Krishna or Lord. So we should not try to take things from others. That's the principle here. Yeah. Anyway, so we got distracted a little bit. Yeah, let's come back. Yatra Kaletva Anavrittim. Yatra Anavrittim. वक्षामि Oh, best of the Bharatas, I shall now explain to you the different times of different times at which passing away from this world, the yogi does or does not come back. Hmm. So, Lord first described, okay, uh, if you, you can attain me through perfection and uh, you can, you know, you, uh, you can come back to me. Uh, so all those principles were explained. Now he tells about how yogi can land in the spiritual planet or come back to the material world based on the different times at which he will pass away from this world. Because you know, yogi, this is in reference to yogi, is not is not talking about a person who is performing bhakti, an astanga yogi. We are talking about an astang yogi, one who performs yama niyama, asana pratyahar, pranayam, dharana dhyana, samadhi, the eight limbs of astang yoga. Right? Uh, 
So where meditation on Lord Vishnu is the primary focus or the process, meditation, dhyana and samadhi. We are not practicing of Hatha Yoga, or, you know, Ashtanga Yoga. Uh, but if the yogi is perfect, he can select the time and situation for leaving this material world. That's the principle. Yogis leave the world on their own accord. Right? But if he's not an expert, if he's not so expert, his success depends on his accidentally passing away at his attempts over the time. But if he, uh, you know, he did practice, but ultimately if he doesn't uh, do the thing at the right time, he's not so expert, uh, he may uh, not achieve the highest destination. The suitable times at which one passes away and does not come back are explained by Lord in the next verse. According to Acharya Bharadeva Vidyabhushna, the word Kala, choose it here, refers to residing deity at the time. So there is a specific deity at every time. The, you know, the whole, you know, the whole day's time is divided into Kalas. And there is a presiding deity of each period. And based on the deity, one, one's destination is determined. Agnir Jyotir Aha Shukla ब्रह्मा <laughs> Those, Those who know the Supreme Brahman attain that Supreme by passing away from the world during the influence of the fiery God in the light at an auspicious moment of the day, during the fortnight of the waxing moon or during the six months when the sun travels in the north. Hmm. This is uh, generally from you know mid-December to June, the six months. These are the times when, you know, all the auspicious things happen, right, in India. All the marriages happen in March, February, April. These are the times, you know, when demigods, it's, it's actually the daytime for demigods. Our six months is equivalent to one daytime of uh, the devatas, right? I discussed this before. So our six months in this world is exactly equivalent to one full day in Indra Loka or Swarga Loka. So they are awake and they are ready to help. In the night time, they go back to sleep. They are not available. So the rest of the period, that's why you see all the festivals, all the pujas primarily happen during the, this time. Uh, auspicious events where one needs, seeks the blessings of Lord. Right? Uh, yeah. Uh, Prabhuji, mm -hmm. um, what is the Uttarayanam uh, different uh, Dakshinayana Kalam? Mm. Uh, uh, so, different. when the sun passes on the northern side, so sun, uh, you know, if you see, if you know, if you uh, astrological calculation is sun passes towards north, means uh, earth experiences sunlight more during the time, right? Uh, sun is closer to sun is closer to earth. That is the period of Uttrayan. When sun is little distant, that's why you experience cold weather. Right? That's called Dakshinayan. Right? Uh, that is how we see you know, half the year sunny and half the year a uh, little bit less sunny. Right? Uh, we experience sun's heat less. So that is how you know, the months are divided, right? Uttarayana means when uh, the sun passes on the northern side, when he passes on the southern side, right? He's, southern means he's going far away. Northern means he's coming closer. So, uh, I mean, if you understand the Vedic astrology and astronomy, uh, one of my friend teaches astronomy, Vedic astronomy. He's an expert. He can explain these concepts much better than me. Oh. Uh, but uh, yeah, so uh, simple consideration is sun is closer to earth. Right? So that's called six months 
of Uttarayana. And six months of Dakshinayan is the period when sun is far. And that is actually the six months when it is distant is the night time for uh, the Devatas. Right? Let's see what Prabhupada explains. When fire, light, day, and fourth night of the moon are mentioned, it is to be understood that over all of them, there are various presiding deities who make arrangement for the passes of the soul. See? Those who know the Supreme Brahman attain the Supreme by passing away means they die at the time. From the world, during the influence of fairy god in that light at an auspicious moment. Fairy god means fire. At the time of death, the mind carries one on the path to a new life. Mind is the subtle body, right? Subtle body carries the, uh, the Atma. If one leaves the body at the time designated above, either accidentally or by arrangement, it is possible for him to attain the impersonal Brahma Jyotir. Mystics who are advanced in yoga practice yoga practice can arrange the time and place to leave the body. Others have no control. If by accident they leave at an auspicious moment, then they will not return to the cycle of birth and death. But otherwise there is every possibility that they have, they will have to return. However, for the pure devotee in Krishna consciousness, there is no fear of returning, whether he leaves the body at an auspicious or inauspicious, by accident or by arrangement. You see? This is for yogis and for normal people also. Karma, karmic laws are stringent. They actually follow what exactly should happen. But for pure devotee, he is above the karmic principles of this world. So there is no fear of returning. And Prabhupada clarified this, but Lord Krishna himself clarifies this in the next few verses. Don't worry. It's not just Prabhupada. It, Lord Krishna himself says the same principle. Dhumo Ratri Stata Krishna Dhumo Ratri Stata Krishna Sanma Sadakshina Yanam Sanma Sadakshina Yanam Tatra Chandra Masa Chatra Chandra Tatra Chandra Masam Jyotir Tatra Chandra Masam Jyotir Yogi Pratya Nivartate Yogi Pratya Nivartate Please read. The mystic who passes away from this world during the smoke, the night, the fortnight of the waning moon or the six months when the sun passes to the south reaches the moon planet, but again comes back. Hmm. So this is for the failed yogi. This is for the successful yogi. The same time was referring, referenced in the fortnight of waning moon, or uh, the six months when the sun passes on the south, right to the south, means the period from July to December, mid-December. Uh, the moon, uh, you know, he may go back to moon if he's a great yogi, but there's a good chance of him coming back. Okay. So in the third canto of Srimad Bhagavatam, this is very detailedly described. Kapil Muni mentions that those who are expert in fruitive activities and sacrificial methods on earth attain to the moon at death. These elevated souls live on the moon for about 10,000 years by demigod calculation. And enjoy life by drinking somerasa. They eventually return to earth. This means that on the moon there are higher class of living entities, though they may not be pursued by the gross senses. See, we may, you know, some people say we went to moon, there is no living entities there. See, the limitedness of our our observation is limited to what we can see, right? But the living entities there are much higher. They are, they are in the subtle form. We are in the gross form. You may not be able to see. It doesn't mean that there is nothing there. It's not like the whole planet is created with there is no purpose for it. It doesn't make any sense. This whole planet was filled with so many jivas. Why would there be so many other planets around this existence that have no living entities? It doesn't, it's, it's such an inefficient uh, People say, oh, 
for us we cannot live there i mean yeah your body cannot live there your body is made for this world it doesn't a fish cannot live outside water it doesn't mean fish doesn't exist right its body is made such that it can live in the water and there are scientific research done where there are living entities who live in fire in fire also there are jivas means living entities we can't even imagine fire means it just go to burn right we think like that because our understanding and our um, experience is like that doesn't mean everything has to life doesn't mean life, life does not mean as we understand on earth okay please uh, understand this so there are every planet is full of living entities jupiter mars <laughs> we are thinking oh we can go into mars and stay there live there uh, you know uh, thoughts like that people by people right? these these ideas are not new by the way even ravana wanted to go to other planets and uh, you know there are there are yogis who actually went there actually they they, they constructed planets themselves you know by the yogic power kapil kapil muni actually he uh, he built a complete planet himself you read in bhagavata about that you will you, you think that you know the idea of going to this planet by elon musk is some some new idea this is actually uh, the mechanistic version of the same idea they those they were doing with yogic version kapil muni they were actually uh, you know the idea of going to other planets was not new and you know what we see in kali yuga is a perverted version of the same idea okay it's it's not that people haven't gone there or you know lived there or there is nothing euphoric about it it's uh, the, you know these things keep on happening you know, there is nothing great about this middle world this scientific technology this computer industry all this existed in the previous ages it's just a, it's just restarting again the same things again and again they uh, don't think that anything something you know suddenly we have this new technology that never existed before don't think like that actually what exists in kaliyuga is the lowest of all uh, in quality and everything because it's irenious people in the previous ages what for example uh 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 sanjaya you know while he was uh, while the battle was happening in kurukshetra he he got a full relay of the same in in where in hastinapur he was living in hastinapur with dhritarashtra all this uh, you know all these words were repetitions of sanjaya to dhritarashtra while you know arjuna was talking to krishna in battlefield right so he had doordarshan Uh, but that is subtle form which what we have as television is a gross technology right the idea of transmission and you know that's all there but they were the technology there was the mystic yoga right through mystic yoga they were doing all these things in the in the in the kali yuga the same idea was there but in a gross form right uh, that's the only difference the, but Uh, don't think that what we have here is the highest and you know we never existed before all these things are punas charvata charvena no chewing the chew the same things repeat every age again and again there is nothing big surprise about any of these technologies artificial intelligence and you know uh, all these are all there uh, they are all uh, you know what we see here is the gross form of them they were all there but in a better form in the previous ages right even the 100 kauravas were born out of a single embryo you see the technology there uh, we can't even imagine this is called mantra technology there it's a subtle subtle technology right uh, we know about what happens in the embryo today because of the advancement of technology right like if suppose a mother is pregnant uh what exactly happens in in the third month what exactly happens what does the child do at the time you know uh, what he uh, you know what develops in the body and all of that we can see very well uh, with the technology available now 
right? With the, uh, what is the technology called? Through which they see the scan of the womb of the baby, uh, womb of the mother. What is the technology? I forgot the name. Uh, anyway, uh, so. Ultrasound. Ultrasound, yeah, sorry, ultrasound. So ultrasound was there. Maybe, uh, you know, when ultrasound came in this world, it came about in 1930s or 50s, right? just 70 years back. Now I can show you in Srimad Bhagavatam. So we think that you know this. Uh, nobody knew what exactly happened, right? What exactly happens in the womb of uh, mother, right? See, the look at the topic. Lord Kapila's instruction on the movements of the living entities. See. Under the supervision of Supreme Lord, according to the result of his work, Karmana Daivanitrana, the living entity of the soul is made to enter into the womb of a mother through the particle of male semen to assume a particular type of body. And he goes into detail exactly what happens. And you know, at on the first night, this happens. In the course of a month, had this form. So he exactly defines exactly what happens at every stage. Not only that. The ultrasound can detect what happens externally, right? Uh, in terms of bodily development, nails, fingers, toes, this can be explained. But what happens in the heart of the, of the giving? What is he thinking? The baby, actually baby is a praying to the Lord at the time that no, none of us know about it, right? Uh, so that is also described here. So how exactly the whole is, so, you would be, you know, you will be like totally uh, blindfolded. I mean, by this, you'll be surprised how exactly he describes in clear details. He not only describes what externally happens to the body, he also describes what happens in the mind of the baby when, when he's in the womb, right? So that, so how, how he was able to describe, because he's, you know, he is actually incarnation of God. And so he, he is the, you know, he's the source of creation. He, he knows exactly what happens. Uh, so that is how great our Vedic knowledge is. You know, we just don't know anything about our Vedas. What, what, everything is so, you know, detailed and scientific. Okay. What we know is just a scratch of it. You know, just, uh, there's so much to learn. Shukla Krishna Gati Yate Shukla Krishna Gati Yate Jagata Saswate Mate Jagata Saswate Mate Ekaya Yati Ana Britim Ekaya Yati Ana Britim Anya Yavartate Puna Anya Yavartate Puna Please read. The opinion there are two ways of passing from this world one in night and one in darkness when one passes in light he does not come back but when one he pass when one passes in darkness he returns this is about the two things two verses about describe the times when one when one yogi passes he comes back and when he uh, does not return I think we can read the next verses in the next class, 6.30 already. Yeah, we've covered a lot of verses. We also referenced multiple scriptures. Prabhuji, here it is mentioned one in light and one in darkness. Does that mean the day and the night? No. Light means the, you know, the uh, Uttrayana. Uttrayana, the period of year when sun is moving in the northern side. 
Uttrayan. Dakshina is when sun is moving on the southern, southern side. Means one in light means the period between December mid Sankranti to June. Okay, on Earth planet. And on in darkness means from July till December beginning. Okay. Understood, Prabhuji. Hare Krishna. Yeah. Okay. So we'll read the next verses. We'll finish this chapter next week and move on to twelfth chapter. Thank you all very much. Uh, any questions? Okay. So it's clear. Good. Thank you. Hare Krishna. Thank you. Thank you, Prabhuji. Thank you, Prabhu. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, Prabhuji.